This week, as the COVID-19 pandemic continues, schools are reopening around the world, from London to St. Petersburg to Wuhan, China, where the whole thing started. But in the U.S., it's been a mixed bag as the continued concern about the spread of the virus and, Rhonda, the increasing death toll. The virus does rage on here in the U.S. with over 6 million cases and since March, 183,000 deaths. The numbers are almost so large, they're, they're almost incomprehensible. And today, there's new reports that the virus's cases are spiking in the Midwest. Indeed. Well, joining us to talk about this is Dr. Boris Lushniak. He is the dean of the University of Maryland School of Public Health and was the acting Surgeon General during a good chunk of the Obama administration. Dr. Lushniak, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Brian. Let me start by asking you, big picture, do you see any uh, bright uh, light at the end of the tunnel? Well, big picture, uh, we're not exactly where we thought we'd be at this point in time. You know, there had been at least a hope that we would run into a summer lull with COVID-19 and that we would be expecting a surge coming up in the fall and winter. What happened, obviously, was throughout the summertime, we never got to that lull. And we have these sporadic hot spots, as you mentioned, currently in the Midwest. I think South Dakota and Iowa are two of the states most affected right now. But it's really been spreading throughout the United States. And so, therefore, the pandemic sort of moves on unabated. Last week at the Republican convention, uh, President Trump promised there'd be a vaccine by the end of the year. Take a look at what he said. I want to ask you about what you think of what he had to say. The entire planet has been struck by a new and powerful, invisible enemy. Like those brave Americans before us, we are meeting this challenge. We are delivering life-saving therapies and will produce a vaccine before the end of the year, or maybe even sooner. Dr. Lushniak, presidential hype, or is there some truth in that, do you think? Well, there's a lot of progress being made on the vaccine front. Uh, let's remember that prior to December 31st, 2019, which was why, it's an important date because that was the date that the WHO office in China was informed of an outbreak of people with pneumonia due to an unknown cause. So we're now nine months into this. And in those nine months, obviously, this has been a novel virus that's been identified, right? And I love using the word novel here because it, it, it really is both definitions. Novel is brand new. Our immune system is not used to it. And, and secondly, novel in that it's been a page turner throughout this whole process. We keep learning brand new things. So incredible progress in that in these short nine months, we now have 36 different vaccine candidates that are in human clinical trials. Yet, I don't see it happening by the end of the year in terms of having an approved vaccine ready to go. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done ahead of us. Again, a lot of great progress. Right now, we have nine such vaccine candidates in, in what's called phase three clinical trial, which is now thousands of people getting the vaccine, it's being looked at from the perspective of does it work? Phases one and phase two of, of vaccine trials really look at safety measures. Safety measures are still being tabulated here, but at the same time, we are finally at the point of seeing whether things work or not. This has become the new space race globally. We know the Russians have a vaccine that they say is ready to go. We know the Chinese are, are continuing on their vaccine front, and many other nations are involved. But I don't see it happening by the election, and I don't see it happening by the end of the year. Perhaps early in 2021, will we be at a point where perhaps a vaccine will be proven to work? But at the same time, then we have to get into mass production of that vaccine and mass distribution. Dr. Lajniak, a question for you from Rhonda Schwartz. Rhonda? It's the beginning of September, the classic back to school week. In some countries, some cities, schools are reopening, but New York City, due to the virus, has pushed back the delayed the reopening of schools. What do you say about this? What's your take on this? Well, Rhonda, again, it's very difficult to say, let's just open up the schools while we still have community spread of the virus going on, right? One of the main features of the spread of this virus is dealing with the density, right, of how many people do we have close together? 
and, and I know a lot of the schools are reopening and have taken in the public health recommendations, right? The whole idea of physical distancing, the mask wear, the hand washing, that continues to be very, very important. And yet I'm concerned about this idea of, of lots of people gathering together. This becomes risky, not only for potentially the students themselves, that is spread between students, but certainly to, to the adults who are teaching in those uh, classes and then the potential of bringing it back home. So this is, has to be done very wisely and very carefully. It can't just be a carte blanche that we're opening the schools and we're ready to go. Doctor, final question for you. Do you see too much of the heavy hand of politics in the decisions being made about this? Absolutely. You know, uh, the, the problem from the get-go uh, regarding the national response uh, uh, in fighting COVID-19 and fighting this is disastrous pandemic has been that it's been hyped politically all along. Like, when did it become sort of politics, right, to say whether you're mask wearing or not? Uh, I think the major mistake has been that the health communication, the public health communication, began coming from political leadership as opposed to coming from public health leadership. Uh, and, you know, politicians need to be involved. They are elected leaders of our society to be able to move us ahead. But the reality is communication needs to be coming from the scientific base side, from the medical base side, from the public health base side. Side. And therefore, I think it's become very confusing for the American public, depending on who's saying what and who they believe in. That shouldn't have happened. Indeed. Dr. Boris Lushniak from the University of Maryland School of Public Health, thank you so much for being here tonight. Great. Thank you so much, Frank.